What's going on guys and gals? My name's Sean. If you landed here, you're watching Scar My Guitar. What's going on everybody? It's good to see you back. Now today, I got something killer going on. Cause I got my guy Trey here with me today. And the reason I got Trey here is not really to shred. Well, of course, we're gonna do a little shredding. And he's been wanting to clean up his Gibson 335 for a while now. He brought this. What this is, is that Bonafide Certified Gibson 335. <laughs> His coveted 335, by the way. I'm gonna let him tell you a little story about it while we check out how funky it is. So how'd you get this guitar? Well, I had a fan express how much they enjoyed the music that I play and thought that this you know, $2,400 PRS I was playing wasn't quite good enough. It just wasn't cutting it. So they came to me and said, hey, let's. I want to get you a guitar. I want you to have the tone I think you're missing. So we drive down, like, South Orlando to this vintage guitar shop, played every Les Paul they had, every PRS they had, they had two 335s, this one and a custom shop blonde. I played the blonde one first, and it was great, but, you know, it still wasn't hitting, hitting you in the soul like it needs to. So, I grabbed this one, and the first thing I did was play the neck pickup. And it had that beautiful, beautiful, creamy neck pickup tone. Just clean into a 1964 Fender amp. <laughs> but yeah, it, it as soon as I heard that first note, I said, this is it. This is the one. So what happened then? So they walked up to the counter, slammed their credit card down, and said, sold. <laughs> sold right on the spot. My man said sold right on the spot. And he has absolutely beat the dickens out of this thing. Look at how cruddy the bridge is. I mean... Holy mackerel. But we're going to let Trey do a little bit of this work today so you can see what Trey does. I don't know about you, but I love that guitar, man. I can't wait to tear it up. Now, he just told me he's been playing this thing for seven months straight. Every single gig, like three or four gigs a week, four or five hours at a time, straight play. So it's covered pretty bad. Now, if you was in the live video, just a couple videos back, he had that guitar with me and I gave it a whiff. It smells just like a horse's. Now, I can't wait to tear this thing up, but I'm going to tell you something right now. I want to hear how it sounds unplugged first with all that funk on it, because I want to see if it gets any clearer later. So let's snatch this bad boy off this table. All right, so I finally got my grubby hands on Trey's grubby 335. <laughs> Bro, I'm sitting right here. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but look how dirty this thing is. You guys are going to get to see how dirty it is. And it still sounds good. Listen. Gosh. Woo. Yeah. Woo. There's nothing wrong with that now. Now hang on just a dang minute. Sean, if you clean that thing up, man, you probably gonna take the mojo off of it. Bro, look, the only thing I'm finna take off that guitar it's hopefully that funky smell, but it ain't gonna rid itself of that smell. So that's gonna be enough lip flapping. Let's make it happen. First, we're gonna take these crappy strings off, but you ain't gotta watch that. All right, I'm going in. I mean, Trey, dude. Guys, do you know how many gigs you have to play? That's pick dust. Yeah, that's all <laughs> flesh and pick dust. It's not just pick dust. It's your hand there. Look at the bridge, dude. Go ahead and pull the tailpiece off. Let's see what it is. What's it say? Can anybody read that? Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> Definitely patina it all crazy. Let's look at the bridge. Is it tight? Hold on. Mm -hmm. Is it tight? <gasps> look at Gibson. Not even. Not even a slight little wiggle. What's it say? It says API right there. API? Man, it's dirty. Turn it over and we can see the side of it. Oh my goodness. Jesus, look at that. <laughs> I've seen Sean use this a bunch. It looks really good, so I'm going to try it here today. 
Yeah, it is good stuff. It's a little expensive for that bottle right there, but it's worth it. I've had that a couple years. What's it doing? It's starting to come off a little bit there. It's all yeah. green. <laughs> you probably gonna need two or three of those paper towels, man. They're yeah. super ugly. It's a lot better, but it's still looking a little tarnished. It's got a ways to go. <laughs> it's got a lot. <laughs> yeah, it don't happen quickly. Sometimes you got to break out the heavy artillery on them. Now this is nickel, so it's never really going to be that super shiny thing again once it gets tarnished real good. Yeah, I prefer the nickel myself to the chrome plating they usually use now. Yeah, you literally have to remove some of the metal to clean this, but it, it needs a little of that patina still on it. Just not enough to where it's affecting it. And gross. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Just, just not so much it's gross. Now that's definitely not perfect, but it's a far cry from what it was. Let's get this guy off of here. We're gonna go straight to the wheel. We already know it needs it. Yeah, he's looking a lot better, ain't he? Far from perfect because it's pitted like crazy. We'll use this alcohol-based prep and cleaner here to get all that stuff off of it. It'll dry real quickly. Won't make it rust or nothing. Yep, because it's alcohol-based, it dries by itself really fast. We'll use the prep and cleaner to wipe the pickups off. To get the funk off, all the skin and stuff off first. Mm. And polish them up a little bit. Now you see I'm going to use this rag to keep this from slinging all over the place. So to clean it off, I'm just going to spray it on the rag. Again, the alcohol-based, fast-dry stuff. Much better. Okay. Now these screws on this thing are seriously rusted. We're going to take our time taking them out. Maybe not. <laughs> Bro, I'm right here. I know. <laughs> Come on. But boy, they are beat up, ain't they? Look at those things. But he likes them, so we'll leave them. And the bridge pickup is what? It is a 57 Classic, and it was wound by P.S. on 12-12-2012. 12-12-2012. Now, I'm really anxious to see if the other one was wound on the same day by the same guy. Let's see if P.S. wound this guy. 
He did. On the same day. He did? He did. Wow, that's not normal. <laughs> it is normal. It should be that way. But, go figure. There's not a single stitch of daggone shielding in here. Really? No. I keep telling people that don't really matter. It's really quiet. The only reason you might need some shielding is if your guitar is making a ton of noise. You're always using a bunch of gain. Or I don't know why you would. <laughs> Somebody please tell me in the comments. Please. Alright, well we got our britches off. Let's go ahead and clean her up. Yeah, let's give her a wipe down. She's been out there in them streets. No nickname for your guitar. Funky Witherbean. <laughs> <laughs> you know who that is? No, nah, tell me. It's an old cartoon character. Let's put the polish on it. Now that we got it clean. Yeah, let's wipe that in there. Now, I know we should probably take the pick guard off, but that screw is hanging on by threads, and Trey don't want to fool with it, so we won't. Now, he's played these frets flat. I don't know if you can see it or not on the camera, but they're totally flat, so we're just going to round them off real quick. Try not to screw the nubs up on these guys. See, I'm not touching them with the file. It's really, really hard to do. I've done it a couple of times though. Yeah, see what I was talking about? How they're green on the sides of the frets too? So we're gonna have to polish these with some real metal polish. Now, if you're using this tool here to polish these frets with these nibs on it, you got to be careful you don't burn those nibs. Cleaner and prep again. Let's get it in there good. Get all this mess off of it. Sometimes when the funk is really funky, <laughs> you got to resort to drastic measures. Look at the toothbrush, how dirty it is. Look at all the stuff on the side of the fretboard. Look at all the funk on the side of the fretboard. Yeah, Trey's a real musician, you know. You don't get your fretboard like this, standing around talking about playing guitar.
and he's got all kinds of cool guitars he's about to be reviewing on the channel he's making. I hope y'all go over there and check him out. Oh, you like that little fretboard cleaner I told you about, huh? I like all Dunlop stuff now. Yeah. Yeah. A buddy of mine told me about it. I'm glad that you can use it. Somebody said you shouldn't go over the frets with this thing. H how can you avoid that? I don't know, but I'm going right over them because I want to clean them too. Some guys use nut grease, nuts, funk, whatever they got. Nut sauce. Nut sauce, but I use three in one. Real deal Gibson. And it's not so grubby. <laughs> now you can see on the finish up there by the horn where his sweat has dulled it down. See the bottom horn? See the top horn? That's from playing the guitar. That's real relic right there on the way in. All right, unplugged. Man, this thing's ringing like a bell, Jack. I said this in the live video. This guitar feels like an old friend to me. <laughs> feels like me and him's already done some stuff together. We've been fishing and <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But uh, let's let Trey turn it up for you. Let me hear it unplugged. Wow. Y'all hear how resonant that is? Wow, man. And there's like no grime on the guitar holding up the vibrations from reaching out. Wow, that's so nice. Let's turn it up a little bit. Let's try this neck pickup. That's that's what sold me on it right there. As soon as I hit that, that's that's what sold me on the guitar. stays in tune like most Gibsons don't. Gibson, all cleaned up. Thanks, Sean. Oh, by the way, don't you touch my scar guitar. Yeah, that was a lot of fun, wasn't it? I like having Trey over. He's got a couple of nice guitars, man. You guys really need to check his channel out. And I can't believe I'm saying this, but we're getting real close to 35,000 subscribers. Yeah, I said we, you and me, because we're the ones doing this together. Yeah, Kathy and I can't thank you enough for watching, guys. We really appreciate it. But until I see you again, don't you touch my scar guitar. Yeah. <laughs>